Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, we will see how we can use YOLO V8 model to detect road signs. So for this project, I will be using this road science data set, which is available publicly on RoboFlow. So I will be using this data set to fine tune my YOLO V8 model on this road science data set. The data set consists of 17 different classes, which are over here, like red light, railway crossing, uh, pedra, uh, zebra crossing, traffic lights, left right lane, green light, do not turn, do not stop, and do not enter. So in this way, we have 17 different classes, and the data set consists of 2,093 images over here, and uh, we have a training set. 66% of the images are used for the training. 23% of the images are used uh, for the 23% of the images are used for the validation purpose, and 11% of the images are used for the test as the testing set or for the testing purpose. And if we do the health check over here, we can see that uh, our data set is balanced. So we don't have the issue like the data set is not balanced, our data set is balanced. The, uh, all the uh, classes have the e almost equal distribution of classes, except the first class, the green light has a bit more, while all the other classes have almost equal distribution of images in all these class, uh, all among all these. Uh, different classes that images are equally distributed among all these classes. So this data set will be used and we will be using this data set to fine tune our YOLO V8 model for the road science detection. So after training the YOLO V8 model on this data set, we will be able to detect the road signs. Okay, so that's cool. And now we will just import, you can say the export this data set from RoboFlow into our Google Colab notebook. So to uh, export this data set from RoboFlow into the Google Colab Notebook. Just click on download the data set and uh, you just need to sign in. If you have an creating account, you need to create an account uh, in RoboFlow. So I have already created my account. So I will just click on download over here. Okay, and then I will click on select the format. So YOLO V5 and YOLO V8 were both were released by Ultralytics. So you can select any of the format. Okay, so I just feel easy to select the YOLO V5 PyTorch format because YOLO V8 uh, and YOLO V5 version were both released by Ultralytics. So just click on here and copy and we will just paste this code into our Google Colab notebook. So in the first step, we will import all the required libraries. So in the first step, I'm doing import OS. Uh, so import OS help us to create a, uh, basically import OS is used to create a helper variable, which allow us to easily manage different file paths in the code. Then we have the glob library. Is glob library is used to return all file paths that match a specific pattern. So we use glob library when we try to display multiple input or output images into our Google Colab notebook. Then to display the input and output image into the Google Colab notebook, we also use the image and display library. So just uh, run this cell over here. Plus before running the script, please make sure that you have access to the GPU by going to hardware accelerator and select as GPU and we will also check whether we have the access to GPU, either we are using the GPU memory or not. So GPU memory usage means we have the access to GPU. Then we are just creating a helping variable so that we which will help us to navigate between the different file paths. Then we are using uh, implementing YOLO V8 by doing by installing the package Ultralytics. So YOLO V8 can be implemented in two ways. Either you can inst uh, install the package Ultralytics, which will install YOLO V8, or either you can git clone the repository. But if you want to simply train, test, and validate the model, it's always better to install the package Ultralytics. But if you want to add some code in the prediction.py, like speed estimation code, or the direction detection code, or the vehicles counting code, or any other code so it's always better to clone the github repo so that you can make the changes but if you want to simply run train test and validation it's always better to install the package of yolo v8 which is pip install ultra analytics and simply run the train test and validation using the command line interface okay so next we will check whether we have installed yolo v8 ultra analytics and it's working fine or not so ultra analytics yolo v8 setup is complete and it's working fine so now we need to create a folder in over this place and we by the name uh data sets which we and which we will download our data set from Lobo, roboflow into this folder so now you can see that here the data sets folder is being created over here let me just create okay just a minute Okay, why it's doing this? Dash content dash. Okay, so just uh, just me. Okay, so 
okay that's fine okay now basically my folders were be created in the drive so i just change this and set this path as my uh, where my folders will be created now you can see that data set folder is created over here okay that's good okay so now in this folder i will download the data set from roboflow and do this google colab notebook folder by the name data sets so just copy this from here and just paste all this from here and now the data set will be downloaded into this data sets folder so this might take some time so as the data set gets downloaded we will run the training script and see what results we will get i have already trained the model on 100 epochs but i will do this again and explain show you all the process flow again as well so now you can see that data set is being downloaded over here okay so next we need to set this as our current now we need to run the training script over here so basically let me check what is my home directory it's fine so now let's run this script which will train our yolo v8 model so we are using yolo v8 s model so our yolo v8 will be fine-tuned or you can say we will train our yolo v8 model on this road science data set which we have downloaded so after we train the yolo v8 model on this road science data set our model will be able to detect the road signs and uh, our model will be able to detect the road signs, parking signs, now do not enter sign plus. Our model will also be able to detect the traffic lights as well. So let's train our Yolo V8 model on this road signs data set. So the training will take quite some time because the data set is quite large. Okay, data set not found. If you ever face this issue, just do one thing. And let's rename this folder and just remove this dash signs, okay? Okay, so you just remove this data signs, dash signs over here and just go to data.yml file and just go over here. So just do what I am doing here. If you ever face this issue, just follow these steps and your issue will be solved. So copy path and then just paste this over here. That's good. So we have around 21 different classes. You can see here we have 21 different classes in this data set okay so just copy this now okay so just copy path from here and just paste this path over here okay okay so now you can will see that the training will start and i hope it will work fine there will not be such issue so at the training start i will just pause this video and then the training complete i will be back and then we will discuss the results as well okay so the training is about to start over here okay so you can see that training has started it's on the first epoch and it is uh, it will uh, go through all the 100 epochs but it will take very much time so i'm just pausing the video and as the training completed i will be back and then we will discuss the results so the training of the yolo v8 model on the road science data set is completed so we have fine-tuned our yolo v8 model on the road science data set and here are the results we have uh, trained our YOLO V8 model on the roads, on road science data set on 100 epochs. So you can see that um, the model performance begins to improve as the number of epochs goes going to increase. So after training the YOLO V8 model on the road science data set for 100 epochs, we can see that uh, the mean average precision with IRU 50 was obtained as 95.8% and the mean average precision with IRU 50 to 95 is obtained as 81.3%. You can say 0 0.813 is 81.3%. So the results are quite good and we can also see that uh, the best weights like uh, uh, we have trained our model on 100 epochs so the, on the epoch which on the epoch which on which model gives us the best performance or so the best results in terms of mean average precision is saved as uh, the weights are saved as best dot vt over here if we go to runs then we go to detect and then we go to a train folder so here we can see that the best weights file over here and the last uh, dot vt is the weights file on the 100th epoch okay so as our model consists of multi class, uh, multi, multiple number of classes, like you can see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 classes. 
so as our data set consists of 17 different classes so we can see that the mean average precision and the mean average uh, precision with iou 50 95 and mean average precision with iou 50 is very good like uh, as our data set consists of many different classes but the results are quite uh, good and the model was giving us a fine performance okay so now we can see that uh, all our results are saved in the training folder. So in the training folder, we have the confusion matrix, F1 curve, precision recall curve, precision curve, and recall curve. Okay, so let's display all these files. Let's see what different files we have in the train folder. So I will just pass this path of the train folder and see what different files we have over here. So you can see that we have the confusion matrix. Uh, the confusion matrix basically show us how our models, how our model, trained your V8 model handles different classes. Then we have the F1 curve. So the, the, the larger the area under the curve, the, the better the model performs. So using F1 curve, we can see that in the result.png file, we have the training and validation losses. In the result.csv file, we have the model performance after each of the epoch. We can see that after each epoch, uh, in the result.csv file, we have the box loss, CS loss, the F1 loss. So, so we have the model performance valuation after each of the uh, epoch in the results.csv file. You can, you can see that there are 10 pages and uh, it has the performance of the model after each epoch, like yeah, the 90th now epoch is over here. So we can have the, we also have the mean average precision uh, with uh, after this epoch, each of the epoch with IRU 50 as well as the mean average precision with IRU 50 to 95 as well. Plus, uh, further, let us display the confusion matrix into our Google Colab notebook. So, so confusion matrix will uh, tell us how our models handles different classes. So you can see that here we have different uh, bus stop, but do not enter class. So let me explain you what does confusion matrix tells me. Okay, so if you consider only the do not turn right. Okay, so this is the do not turn right class. So if we see here, so 0.94 here we have. So it, what does it mean is that 94% of the times our model detected correctly that this is the, uh, that the sign is of do not turn right, okay? So when there was a sign that do not turn right, there was a road sign that do not turn right, our model detected correctly that there is a sign that do not turn right. While 3% uh, of the time, 0 0.03 means 3% of the time when there was a sign that do not turn right, our model detected it as a do not take a U-turn, okay? So our model was unable to detect it correctly that it is a sign that do not turn right. Instead of detecting it that this is a sign that do not turn right, our model detected it, this is a sign that do not take a U-turn. So our model misclassified the right sign, do not take a right uh, turn sign as the do not take a U-turn. So 3% of the time when there was a sign of do not turn right, our model was unable to detect it and uh, our model misclassified it as do not turn right, okay? While 3% of the time, you can see while uh, remaining 3% of the time, when there was a sign that do not turn right, our model was unable to detect it. Like means uh, when there is a sign that do not turn right, our model was unable to detect anything. Like model was blank, like nothing was detected when there was a sign that do not turn right. 3% of the time, uh, when there was a sign that do not turn right, our model was unable to detect anything. Okay, so here are the model predictions on the validation bot there. So these images are not used for the training. So it's always better to have a look and see how our model performs on the validation beds. So here are the training and validation losses. So from these results, we can see that the box loss, CS loss, CLS loss, our DF1 loss are continuously decreasing. So we have trained our model on 100 epochs. So if we train our model on 150 or 200 epochs, then we can clearly see that the loss will further decrease while the mean average precision is continuously improving. So we can say that if we train our model on 200 or 300 epochs, we can get further better mean average precision. So now we are validating our custom model on the validation data set images over here. So in the validation batch, the validation data set, we have 488 images and we are seeing how our models performs on the validation uh, data set images. So we are taking the best weights of the model, which are here, best.pt. And as we are validating our model, so have, we have the mod as validation. When we are doing training, we have the mod as train. Okay, and here I'm just passing the data set path over here, data.yml contain the validation data set images path. 
So here are the model uh, results on the, when we validate the model on the uh, test data set images or on the validation data set images, not the test on the validation data set images. So we are validating the model on the validation data set images, okay? So we can see that uh, we have got the mean average precision with IOU 50 as 0 0.959, mean average precision with IOU 50 to 95 is 0 0.822. So the results are quite impressive for all the classes, okay? So now uh, we will test our model on some demo video. So I will just download the videos directly from Google Drive into the Google Colab notebook. So what I have done is I have downloaded some sample videos from the pixel site. So uh, then I saved the into my uh, into my local computer. So I downloaded some sample videos from pixel site into my local computer, and then I just uploaded those videos onto the uh, Google uh, Drive and just I'm downloading those videos from Google Drive and directly into my Google Colab notebook. Okay, so let's run the uh, script on some uh, demo video and see what results do we get from here. So as I'm doing no prediction, so I'm just passing. Okay, what is this issue? You look one. I think there's an issue. Let me check. Okay, so it's working fine. I have just made a mistake. I have not imported ultralytics in the above, so I just run it and it's working fine. So now we have run the script on this demo video over here. So here, the, uh, our, the video, the complete video was divided into a 119 frame and the processing on each of the frame was done one by one. So let's display, let me display the output video and see what results do we get. Okay, so we will display the output video into the Google Colab notebook over here and then we will see what results we are getting. After this, we will test on another demo video as well. And we will also see what results we get there as well. So it might take a few more seconds. So let's wait and as it complete, I will show you the results and then we will move further and discuss few other things as well. So now you can see the output video in front of you over here. Let me just download this video and show you on a full screen what results we are getting. Okay, so just let me now share my screen. Okay, so here I have navigated my screen to the output video. So you can see that here we have a sign do not turn right and our model was able to detect it correctly that do not uh, turn left. I think this was a sign that do not turn left and our model was successfully able to detect it that uh, there is a sign that do not turn left. Okay, so that's fine. So let's test uh, this on another demo video. Okay, so I'm just testing it now on demo video two. So just run the script. Okay, let me just pause it and pass uh, some other demo video. Okay, so road signs. So just copy this from here. Okay, so and just pass this over here and see what results do we get on this demo video two. And then I will show you the output demo video over here as well. And then we will proceed further. Okay, so this might take some time to process. Okay, so the complete video is divided into 333 frames and it is doing the processing one by one. Like we can see that um, the traffic parking sign is directed quite a lot of times. So let me show you the output video over here and see what results we get. Our results are saved in prediction 16 over here. Let's write prediction and what was the name of the, our uh, source file? Okay, and okay, so let me display the output video over here and then we can see what results do we are getting from this uh, video. Okay, so let me show you the output demo video over here. So this might take some time. So as it completes, the output video will be displayed over here, but it might take some time. So I'm just uh, waiting for it to display. Okay, so here we have the output video. Let me just download it and show you what results are we getting over here. Okay, let's just navigate my screen on this output video. Okay, so you can see that the model was able to detect the red light. Okay, and the model was able to detect the lights as well. Parking sign was also detected by the model over here. That's good. Okay, and do not turn sign was also detected here by the model. So the results are quite fine. Our model was able to detect the parking sign, do not turn sign, the red light sign, other signs as well. So that's all from this video tutorial. I hope you have learned something from this video tutorial. See you all in the next video tutorial. Till then, bye-bye.